Good morning, guys, from the famous Amboseli National Park in Kenya. You know, the one with big Mount Kilimanjaro in the background. We're here for a full three days, and the question is, is that enough to grab that iconic shot of having the elephants walk in front of Africa's tallest mountain? Ideally, maybe with some snow on the top. A lot of things have to come together. We'll see if I can get that photograph and stay tuned to the end to see whether or not I was able to even see some of the big tusked elephants that this park is famous for. Before we get started, my name is Janine and I'm a professional wildlife photographer with Pangolin Photo Safari. I must have the best job in the world because I take people like you to amazing places like this and help you get the best photographs out there. If you would like to join our growing community of wildlife enthusiasts, please don't forget to subscribe right here so that you will never miss a video, a trip or tutorial of ours ever again. Amboseli National Park is located in the south of Kenya, right on the Tanzanian border with probably the most iconic backdrop one can envision for a safari, Mount Kilimanjaro, the largest mountain in Africa with 5,895 meters, a previously extinct volcano. The park is wide open with short grasslands, which allows you to easily spot and photograph animals, some even as rare as the smaller cats, which is really fun. The atmosphere is quite stark, as the volcanic soil creates a dusty and hazy glow wherever the wildlife is moving. This is particularly fantastic when the sun stands low, as you get great subject separation from the ground when you shoot into the light. If your guide knows how to position you right, you can even get true silhouettes against the sky as you find slightly rolling hills that allow you to get positioned on the lower end. Dead tree stumps and forests add to the mystical atmosphere, creating a very unique environment for photography. This stands in stark contrast to the bright green swamps that are teeming with life and allow for a surprising number of water birds as well that I was not expecting when coming here. However, we are currently here during one of Amboseli's longest droughts, which has devastated the area. It is particularly dry everywhere other than the swamps, with too little plains grass, foliage and roughage to feed the wildlife. And the Maasai have been forced to drive their livestock into the national park to water it. This adds additional pressure on the resources for all the grazers around, but also provides some theatrical images. In the last 10 to 15 years, the Amboseli National Park has changed dramatically. The whole ecosystem has been moving because a water table has been rising and the water is quite salty, which meant a lot of trees ended up dying. It creates a really moody atmosphere, but with less forests, there's less bush and forest animals. The animals that have been thriving is the wild beast and the elephants, the elephants which we're obviously looking for. However, they do have programs where they try and protect forest and even regrow forest in these areas, where they infence certain places for a certain amount of time to give these trees some time to grow, that the elephants can't get to them in the meanwhile. During the drought, they have opened most of them to give the animals a fighting chance to survive. In order to get the shot we came for, any particular photograph actually, we need to understand both the ecosystem and wildlife behavior around you. Within the first day, our guide was able to show us that Amboseli works according to a natural rhythm. A rhythm not much unlike what we're used to in the Chobe National Park. You'll find most elephants grazing in the swamps during daytime when it's hot. However, swamp or floodplain grass is known to have a low nutritional value. It is not enough to sustain an animal as large as an elephant. Therefore, the elephants migrate into forest and bushy areas for browsing, which they find in adjacent regions to the park, either private concessions or community land. This in turn means that many elephants and other grazers follow a similar migration route on a daily basis that leads them straight past Mount Kilimanjaro. Therefore, we positioned ourselves on one of the roads in the later morning when it slowly grows hot to see what is coming past. And my oh my, 
there is a lot. Is it easy? Nope. I struggled with multiple things. One, the distance of the animals to me, or rather the mountain. I preferred having the animals further away to shoot them with a long zoom lens in order to achieve some sort of compression against the mountain that let them appear larger. However, off-roading is strictly forbidden in Amboseli to not add any additional stress to the animal's daily routine, and one cannot choose where they walk. Additionally, the African heat around the equator soon proved to add a mirage that made it difficult to get clear shots. However, the elephants prefer to come in the heat. Snow is a complete matter of luck. We had a tiny bit, but the air was hazy and filled with dust which affected how clear the mountain appeared. A good rain will help with both the haze and the snow, but also increases cloud coverage, which we don't want. The heavy rains can be expected in the month between March and May, as well as in November and December. So these months might not be ideal to see Mount Kilimanjaro. But even January and February, you might get a little rain, and this time it might help your snow coverage without covering up the mountain all the time. And I climbed up Lookout to quickly show you the ecosystem around Amboseli. Right behind me, you see one of the two different swamp areas that you find in the National Park. These swamps are the lifeline of the park. They have permanent water that comes from underground water source that is fed by the water coming down Mount Kilimanjaro. So it's nice and fresh and filtered. So even during our drought at the moment, we find plenty of water and grass in this area. However, it is not all the nutrition that the animals need here. Above and beyond these swamps, we have beautiful grasslands that are usually really short, which makes photography really easy in this area and quite nice to spot animals and position animals. Around, you'll find Lake Amboseli, which is mostly dry and really dusty. So it is really awesome to photograph, especially the elephants coming through there with the dust clouds coming up. The lake only fills up in big rains during the rainy season. And let's hope this rainy season will bring enough rain to end this drought. On a side note, it did. April and May brought a good amount of rain to Amboseli, relieving the stress on the ecosystem, which is incredibly diverse. Other than our beloved elephants and an astounding number of wild beasts and zebras, we could find beautiful bird life, including everything from waders to herons to bee eaters and raptors. We had giraffes, lions, cheetah and hyenas paired with a troop of naughty baboons at the lodge. But it was noticeable that the lack of trees would affect leopard populations, for instance. Nevertheless, we had no trouble keeping ourselves busy all day. It's a walk right through. Oh, is that big? This is amazing. That's beauty about going into the bush. You never know what you're going to get. We're here in Mboseli for elephants, but we have the full moon setting over the swamp and we have the flamingos fishing right in the spotlight of the moon. It is so beautiful. It is phenomenal. The only thing interrupting our safari was a brief lunch at our lodge, which was never far away as it's positioned very central. The easily accessible location is the reason we chose this place, as it allows us to explore all areas of the national park at any time of the day that the park rules allow us. Comfortable rooms are overviewing the swamps and allow you to observe the animals during your daytime break. But the question is, can we find a big tusked elephant as well? Elephants are astonishingly well monitored and recorded in Amboseli. Every elephant older than four years is known to the authorities and research centers, including their entire family tree and genetics. However, older elephant bulls, those prone to larger tusks, have a massive home range and don't just call Amboseli their home. They roam around through the community lands, private concessions, and all the way to Tsavo National Park, covering an area over six million hectare if need be. So whether they are around or not during your stay is not a given.
But let's talk about what a big tusker is in the first place. The term big tusker is reserved for elephants with tusks so large they can touch the floor. There's only about 25 individuals left in Africa. But genetics in the area around Amboseli are favorable and medium-aged bulls are expected to fill some gaps in the upcoming decades. Probably the most famous of the big tuskers is Craig at this stage, and our guide was quickly able to figure out that he was currently not around. However, that didn't mean we couldn't find an elephant with tusks larger than I have seen in my last 10 years with pangolin photo safaris. We were very fortunate to come across a beautiful elephant, even in front of Kilimanjaro. He wasn't too fond of the attention and decided to move into the forest. A day later, we found Mike, and he was just such a treat. Brushing through the dead trees around our lodge and walking across to the swamps for sunrise just brought me to tears. While his tusks don't touch the ground yet, these guys are our future. With community lands becoming more splintered, plots being sold for multiple use areas, and their home range becoming disconnected, it becomes increasingly difficult for both humans and elephants to live with each other, as temperatures keep on increasing. But there is no place like Amboseli, where the large tusked elephants are so well monitored, and there is so many humans taking true interest in their success. It's our last hours in the Amboseli National Park and we're in Lake Amboseli, the dried out lake bed that the animals have to cross in order to get to the marshland. We have one breeding herd of elephants coming straight towards us with dust devils around them and I'm really excited for these pictures. It's a shot that you can't get like this anywhere else. And it is one of the last things we really wanted to get while visiting Amboseli. This is our last evening in the Amboseli National Park. It is blowing really hard and Kili is just starting to come out. But to answer your real question, is it possible to get elephants in front of Mount Kilimanjaro? Yes, it definitely is. The elephants go through this cycle that I explained earlier. And that means that every single day these herds pass by the mountain depending on how far or how close. If you spend a few days here, you will definitely catch them. Whether you can get one with big tusks is a different question. You need to look for them and you need to get a little bit lucky. Also, you need to get lucky with the weather. But I found that most mornings and even most evenings, the mountain is visible. Some clouds might build up midday, but altogether, within three days, you will definitely catch some elephants. Check out my shots that I got here and see how you like them. I thought it was a really, really special place that allowed you to get completely different elephant photographs.